Hello and welcome back to A Pilot's Love for Me. My name is Ross, I'm a captain and a type rate instructor on the Boeing 737 aircraft. Now in this video today we're going to be looking at why do aircrafts get intercepted. Before we go into it, let's take a quick look at the Royal Air Force in action to show you how serious they take any possible threat to UK airspace. Let's take a look. Matt Rep, good morning sir, this is the Master Controller. I have a track of interest in the system for you. Zulu Zulu 001. He's east coast heading northwest right now at 35,000 feet. Yeah, I can see it on your radar. Roger, that's understood. Coningsby Operations and QRA, this is the Black Dog Master Controller Acknowledge. QRA. Q on. Four quick reaction alerts. Scramble, scramble, scramble acknowledge. QRA. Thirty thousand feet above the North Sea, the typhoons are closing in on our aircraft. They approach cautiously, in case they spook the plane, and then they try to contact the cockpit. Russian 66 from Q2, intercept your aircraft. Our aircraft doesn't respond. A Q2, Black Dog, confirm the response. It's remarkable how close they get. There's one either side of us at the moment, both fully armed. If you were a hostile aircraft, that's quite threatening. The Typhoon pilots will report what they're seeing back to the ground and in turn receive any new intelligence. Change heading onto east immediately, at large. So that they can stay on station for as long as needed, a refueling tanker is deployed. They will be getting um, communications from the control and reporting centres at Scampton and, and Bulmer. They'll be giving us instructions um, as more information is fed to them and they gain more information from, from other sources. And then gradually there's an escalation process if that needs to occur. There's nothing new in there that we don't practice and the training just kicks in and the adrenaline, the adrenaline flows. Having no luck with radio contact, the Typhoon pilots fire flares as a show of force. By now most options have been tried and our plane is still not responding. It has become a real threat to national security. I am instructed by Her Majesty's Government of the United Kingdom to warn you that if you do not respond immediately to my orders to turn east, you will be shot down. It is probable that were this happening for real, the Prime Minister or a senior cabinet member would now be on the line and briefed. The worst case scenario is that we potentially have to shoot down uh, an aircraft but that's having gone through the most robust processes and procedures in order to identify and interrogate that aircraft. And who would make that decision? That decision is held at the political level, at the highest political level. But who would give the order to the pilot? The orders would be issued by my team. Are they trained for that? Absolutely, and they're ready to do that. Would you be prepared to shoot down a commercial airliner? At the end of the day, we're in the military. This is our job 24-7, 365 days, days a year. So. Um, if that's an order given to us and the correct protocols have been followed, the correct authentications be given, then yes, we, we can't think about it. It's our job. Does uh, it go it's an order. Line? It will when I land, it won't airball. The typhoons have returned to Coningsby. Another day on quick reaction alert. Their mission is over, their shift isn't. They go back on standby, ready should the alarm go again. Hopefully you can see from that video just how serious the Royal Air Force are with protecting the UK airspace. So let's take a look at a few reasons as to why aircrafts get intercepted. Now it could be an unlawful interference, maybe a possible hijacking, or someone's actually trying to force entry into the flight deck. Other reasons could be there may be a credible threat against the airline or the aircraft. But the most common reason would be a communication failure. Now that could be a communication failure between the equipment on the aircraft, in which case you can't speak to ATC, 
or they can't speak to you. Or the most common one would be pilot error. So what do I mean by pilot error? When we fly every day, we're in constant contact with ATC. So that would mean we'd get frequency changes all the time to our destination, to the next frequency, to the next frequency. Now, when we cross uh, an FIR boundary, which would be uh, between maybe UK into France, we'd be speaking to the French air traffic control. Now, at some point, we would log into what we call CBDLC or data link on the aircraft, and it's built into the aircraft. So this could basically be a text message or an email that would be sent from the uh, air traffic control to us in the flight deck, or we could send one back to them, which is a method of communication. Other things we have is uh, one to one five, which is a safety frequency that we listen to in the air. Now, for any reason uh, we lose communication with our primary comms, uh, then we hopefully someone on one to one five would contact us on there and give us a new frequency to contact remaining in contact at all times. So for any reason that we're not listening to one to one five or we're not on CBDLC or data link and we've uh, lost the frequency or we're out of range um, from the previous frequency, then this would be a reason why we'd get intercepted as well. Now this is quite rare, but it still does happen. So hopefully we've shed some lights on what it's like to be intercepted and some of the reasons why aircrafts could be intercepted. Once again, thank you for watching A Pilot's Life of Me. Make sure you like and subscribe for more videos like this.